Morning. Well, uh, today's video is going to be floors on the Model T. But I figured I'd sit down here like uh, Mr. Dress Up, talk to you guys real quick about that uh, DeBoss International Quarantine Car Show. So a couple days ago, I put a video up uh, showing all the cars. So I think typically what people are doing is they're putting up one car at a time or, or something like that in the submission. I ended up jamming uh, all of them, or whatever I had at home, in one video. See how that works out for me. But anyways, there's uh, there's six total categories of which I uh, entered four. So I figured I'd give you a quick rundown on them. Because uh, I'd do a little research and see exactly what the judges were looking for and what I was going to fit into best. And uh, the one I think I fit into best is the Tuner Taste category, which sounds like a funny name because it kind of makes you think it's import. Uh, it's Sarah Intuned on YouTube. She's got an awesome channel. She typically deals with import stuff. I just started watching her actually, but uh, in her little description, she said she was looking for someone that could build a car on the cheap, uh, not just go out and buy a bunch of stuff and everything, which uh, woo -woo, I think I fit into pretty good in that category. Everything I do is on the cheap. Uh, pretty uh, pretty rare I spend a bunch of money on stuff. I'm more of a quantity over quality kind of guy. So I thought that was a good one. The one below that was Purity Award which is uh, Mr. Regular, which again, that was a new YouTube channel I just started watching as well. That guy's got some good stuff out there too. That's that's the best part about this is meeting all these new, uh, or hearing about I guess, all these new channels you actually check out and kind of go into. Uh, so the way he's looking at it, the way I interpret it anyways, was uh, I guess the love of cars, which uh, I also think I fit into pretty good. Ultimately, if you don't want to talk about cars, I don't want to be your friend, so I don't know. Uh, after that was... Uh, Vice Grip Garage, Derek, he's looking for the factory award, which I don't really fit into. I mean, I guess some of my stuff is, it is what it is, but it's not uh, factory original. The Nova's was close, so we're going to get to that. And uh, it's still not, not exactly that, but hey, it is what it is. And then below that is my buddy Peg with the Minty Award. I don't know what the heck that guy's looking for, so I think everybody just kind of joined in it because uh, there's a smorgasbord of miscellaneous cars because he's got his work cut out for him. But anyways, I'll put a link. There's four different links, I guess, to each one of those awards. I'll uh, put them in the description below. So do me a favor and click on it and vote for me. Uh, I think they're looking for top 25. Uh, end up going right to the judges and the judges themselves will all get involved with uh, Rich and Aaron and stuff like that and pick who wins the category and then moves on from there into winning the overall thing. Which hey, it'd be, it'd be sweet just to be in the top 25 of uh, one of these categories. So do me a favor and vote for me. Uh, like I said, the description will be there. If I end up winning anything, I'm passing it on to you guys and I just kind of want to get the stuff out there and get recognized. So that's that's my goal. Thanks for watching as always. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel right now. I'll get started to uh, work on these hot rod floors. What's going on guys? All right, well, where do I leave it off here? I was working on this structure, so I finished it off. I'm mostly done. It needs a few little kind of supports. So I gotta finish welding it. I got some miscellaneous cardboard so I can start making my templates, but before I go too crazy, I picked up my drive shaft. Same guy, got a good drive shaft guy. Uh, he got some miscellaneous U joints for me and all that, put all together. So I'm going to slip this in the car and uh, bolt it in because I just want to make sure I'm not going to be hitting on that brace right there. So I'll do that, bounce up and down on it. As long as it's not bashing anything, I'm going to call it good. And then I can start welding everything in permanently. Otherwise, worst case, I just got to extend the tunnel a little bit further back. But I'm hoping I don't have to because then this will leave lots of room for a seat. And then I built this up the back, so I just tagged into the side, straight down, a couple little cross braces, and then my plan is just to put a little piece of sheet metal right into this kind of belt line thing underneath it or whatever. So I'll be like a firewall the whole way across, get right into the body, seam seal it, it'll be 100% uh, sealed off from the car. And yeah, I can't go wrong with that, right? Hoping. So we'll see how she goes. Uh. Well, for those of you keeping track, I had to cut out that cross member because it was going to hit. I don't know if I can do this or not, but now look at all that. So it should be pretty good. Uh, lots of travel and slip yoke. 
that's golden. It's actually smashing on the body right now. So I gotta just put like a little uh, half circle, probably over the axle. Not too much, because I do like the ride height. And a set of shocks and bump stops will basically do whatever. But that, I'm happy with. So it's all together. In theory, I should be able to put it in gear and drive it. I couldn't steer it, stop it, or control the throttle, but other than that. So yeah, that worked out pretty good. Now that I got that, I'm going to uh, go around, just everything has just been tack welded in. i got to buzz the whole thing in proper. I still got to do back uh, body mounts, do all that, then get kind of three quarter or three sides of it, and then uh, put it up on stands or next to them under it, just buzz in all the little pieces, and then start tracing out my firewall out of cardboard, and then probably argue with Danielle uh, as we try and use the bead roll together, because I think it's a two-man job and i'm quarantined with her so that's uh that's life so i guess we'll see what goes i gotta do a little googling see what i want to do for designs and all that sort of stuff never done it before i mean ultimately just putting some sort of line in it can't be uh too hard to give it a lot more strength so i'll buzz this all together and uh yeah we'll start tracing uh what's going on guys so it's actually the next day well i got sidetracked yesterday and so and then today i started doing a bunch of work actually last night too so i've got the structure welded in i ground down the tops i got my rear body mounts in i'm pretty happy with it uh it's basically done up until about where the bell housing starts kind of on the transmission so i think i can start doing the back the uh whatever tail panel or you want to call that there little shelf uh the back part of where the seat's going to be and up over the trans tunnel and then basically the whole pasture side and most of the driver's side up until about the yoke and then that i may have to do a little mess around with the uh the braking and all that sort of stuff so that's that i got sidetracked i ended up painting the door white and i actually got some of this garage door lighting which is pretty slick so it's just nice this weekend's maybe i can test it out with the door up uh so yeah that's where i've gotten i got a bunch of this kind of poster board so I'm going to start kind of tracing out what I want to do. I've never built a floor like this from scratch. So it'll be a learning experience. Uh, I got this plenishing hammer out. I'm kind of playing with that and just some scrap steel. And I was running some, uh, you know, some beads in it and stuff. Just seeing how it's going to work. So my plan is kind of tape some of these together, make a few pieces. I'm probably going to make it in... Uh, multiple smaller pieces that way if i screw it up uh, at least it's a small piece i have to kind of replace <clears throat> and uh, i put lots of bracing in so i plan on kind of overlapping it a a little bit but yeah i think that's that's kind of my plan so i'm gonna start getting in here it's actually super awkward now to be in the car because you can't put your foot anywhere and it's really awkward to sit in but uh yeah start fitting it with some cardboard see what it kind of starts to look like maybe it'll start talking to me and then uh transfer with some metal, I guess. But, I'll get started. So, that's what I'm thinking. Definitely needs lots of trimming on the sides and all that. The transmission tunnel is going to be a bit of a pain. Uh, if I was a little more skilled, I definitely could have done it or fewer pieces or rounded or do whatever. But that's what I think I'm going to do. 
uh, these back pieces, I'll, I'll probably just kind of get it all fitted nice and I'll tape them all together, kind of make one piece and I'll just split them up wherever I think I should uh, with a razor blade and work in manageable size bits. Uh, this is what I was thinking on the back for the package tray kind of thing. It still needs a little bit of trimming, but something along those lines. And it might actually even go under instead of on top. But if I go under, it falls down. So that'll give me about the shape. And then obviously I got to fill in this little strip. But uh, that'll probably, again, be in, in two pieces. Overlap them, weld them together. And then, uh, you know, I'm thinking I'll probably end up doing a few spot welds to the actual structure on the top side. And I can weld up on the back a little more permanently. Uh, the floor is actually really easy up here. Uh, I kind of stopped because I still got to finish and make my structure. But I wanted to get started on the back just to kind of break it up and do something a little bit different. Start on the tunnel. At least maybe get kind of about here, back, down and all in there. Because it's just so awkward to be in the car right now. My big stupid boots are getting stuck and everything. But I think that's where I'm going to leave it for right now. I'm going to practice with some scrap metal on the uh, on the bead roller and stuff. So, you know, a lot of people are saying when you do, uh, when you run into a bunch of beads, it ends up kind of mangling the steel. Uh, it gets it kind of wobbly. But if you trace your lines and run it through the hammer real quick or an English wheel, but this is what I have, just once or twice, it kind of pre-stretches the metal and then run that line again with the bead roller. And then I'm fighting out what size of bead I want to put in it. So I have two or three different sizes. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit tonight. And then I think we'll be back at it tomorrow. And we'll try making a few panels. Probably get Danielle out here and see if she can maybe turn this fancy steering wheel. While I uh, struggle my way through it. Got lots of steel, so I have lots of practice. But yeah, I've never done this before, but it uh, seems to be going together. I'll be happy with it. And ultimately, I'm going to seam seal it and probably put a carpet or something like that down. So who really cares? See you guys tomorrow. Well, next day yet again, uh, I pulled out all my templates after I stepped on them, so that was a bummer. But uh, the aftermath of uh, trying to fit some floors. So I started working on this one panel, a little kind of firewall piece. So I got it kind of trimmed out. Uh, so it kind of follows the contour and I don't know, it is what it is. I built this little top piece. It's all just kind of loose in there. I used these Clecos for the first time. That's quite a quite a system. My old man got me those for Christmas, I think, and I've been self-tappering. I feel like I've a whole new world has been opened up. But uh, kind of so I mean, it's needs a little bit more cleaning up in here. I just chopped those out with the uh, hand shears. But, uh, I mean, it's pretty close anyways. Close enough that I can take it out. I'll clean that up. This, I'll probably draw some lines on it for uh, for some sort of bead rolling. You know, I don't know, a couple of swoops or whatever the heck. But uh, I just want to test fit it all together for now. So I think I'll start working maybe on these back panels just a little bit. See what they kind of look like. And uh, Clico this whole thing together as much as I can. These side panels will be pretty easy. I mean, I can't see needing the Clico and test fit those. It'll be get the floor where you want it, then just buzz those out and, uh, and give her. So I'm going to carry on test fitting these floors. Awesome. And uh, kind of show you guys what I'm thinking they're going to look like. Again, I'm just kind of winging it as I go, but uh, I have a vision in my head and I think I'm going to achieve it. All right, so I'm kind of working in small sections because I find it uh, makes more sense to me. So I got this one little piece in and ultimately what I've done is I've split it uh, kind of right down the middle on the uh, on a little skeleton on the sides. Uh, obviously it's gonna run on this sill so there's lots of meat there. I can weld it right into the inner structure. Uh, there was a little gap here, I'm gonna go right across and do that. Uh, along the back again, I weld it in its double. So when I weld kind of in the seam, which I left, it's going to be getting good penetration there. So that's all fine. Uh, before I do anything crazy underneath, I'll probably just scribe a bunch of lines and I can drill some holes and plug weld it on the top. Or after i am uh, got it kind of in underneath, I can just kind of burn it uh, kind of from the bottom side. But yeah, that's what I'm kind of doing. 
So I've done that. I then traced out this front piece, which is going to go up to this brace. So, uh, I mean, it's pretty simple. Take my crude little template. I'm going to trace it on here, cut it out, and then it gives me about the right shape. And then I just kind of cut, trim, bend, hack, whack, whatever I got to do until it fits. So maybe I'll set the tripod up for that panel. I'm hoping I get that panel and then that panel done. And I'll start working on these center pieces. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do for the trans tunnel, if I'm going to actually bead roll a bunch of stuff or not. But ultimately, uh, again, I have all these side pieces so I can fit stuff in and weld it all. I mean, these small little pieces won't have a lot of flex. And also, you're not really going to be sitting on them. And I think I kind of overbuilt the trans tunnel anyways. It's going to be a way more pieces than it really needs to be. Ultimately, I'm really just concerned about right here because that's where I'm going to be sitting. The, you know, the bench will go across and then your feet when you're getting in and out. So right right there and there is the big issues. And up at the front, because there's so much structure from the car itself, like that's dead solid. As long as I carry on up there into the firewall, that'll be uh, lots of strength. So I think it'll be pretty good. So I'll set the tripod up. We'll get this one uh, kind of cut out and test fit in and Clicos, I'm telling you, buy them. They're on Amazon or something like that. I should have bought a bunch more uh, I saw me the other day, I was like, I have some of those, I should use them, so it's working out. So that's all I do. Manageable size bits. That one needs a bit of a, a curve put in it because it does start to slope up, but I'll just kind of screw that in and it'll naturally do its own little bend and then the rest of it will be at a, a solid angle. I'm going to work on this piece yet tonight and probably end up calling it, uh, but I'm going to do it a little bigger. I'm going to do it right up to here because I'm pretty sure uh, this section uh, like that's probably gonna have to come out because of the brakes or that one one or the other But ultimately uh, when I had the brakes there you have the master cylinder and you're gonna have to have that removable To do any sort of servicing to the brakes. So I may end up boxing this in uh, with some more uh, half inch and then just kind of screw it in one panel and So I'll just kind of work on this one. I should have a template. It probably stops there So I'll just have to tape on another piece that goes out to there get that all squared away and then yeah i think that's where i'm gonna leave it for tonight and then tomorrow i'll start doing some bead rolling we'll kind of do a few practice pieces but ultimately that's how it is and i mean really it has a fair bit of strength because i did go uh, overkill i think on a lot of these uh bars and whatnot and it's decently thick steel i didn't cheap out or nothing like that but still i don't want it coat canning around and all that so i'll uh figure out design it'll probably just be kind of lengths nothing too crazy of uh of the bead and kind of carry on the other thing actually i don't know if i showed you guys or not i got this garage door lighting i got the door up which is fantastic it's actually a little chilly but see how the door goes up these things automatically kick on it's got uh, a lot of light in here I'm sparing no expense for you guys trying to put as much light in here as i possibly can so this piece cut out get it kind of situated in be done for the night Well, here's where I ended up. So, uh, pretty late night. It's a little after midnight, so I'm going to call her here, I think. And uh, tomorrow, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got to do a little bit of cleaning up. Uh, I think I'll probably start making some of the transmission pieces. And then, I don't know, maybe draw some cool lines or do something like that for what I think the uh, bead roll should kind of look like. But overall, I mean, it looks pretty cool. I think uh, I'm happy with it. This can all go together, nothing's really going to change. The only thing I have to do is mark 
where the uh, the body mounts are. And I'm just going to hole saw those out and I'll just get some rubber grommets to plunk those in so I can still get the uh, body off if I ever have to. Otherwise, I guess just kind of weld it and seam seal it. That's all, that's all I would really do. That's all I'm going to do. So yeah, I'll get that taken care of. It's just a real pain to work up there uh, when you're in this structure because your feet's getting caught and stuff, at least this way now, and get it in, just tack all it together. I can lie on it, you know, and get up in there and bake the firewall and all those sort of things. So that was a pretty, pretty big moment. Good day. I'm stoked on it. Uh, definitely got a, I got some miscellaneous scrap now. So learning the bead roller tomorrow is going to be, uh, I'm going to spend most of my day. So, see you guys in the morning. What's going on guys, next day. So, I've pulled out the back panel. Uh, what I did, I marked it, so that's the trunk side. I ended up tracing through the trunk all the bracing, so I know where it is. Then I just drilled some holes so I can plug weld it in place. Uh, once it's in, then I'll probably come and just stitch it in. I cleaned up the edges where it's all kind of just cut, but now I'm going to clean this off and I think I'm just going to do some real simple uh, bead rolling lines and that's it. Nothing uh, nothing too crazy at all, just so it has a little bit more strength. Uh, I think what I might do is once I mark them, I might just run them through the plunging hammer real quick. Just one strip, just to kind of stretch the metal out a little bit and then run it through the bead roller and we'll see. Hopefully I don't mangle this panel up. It's the first one I'm going to do. So, eh, wish me some luck. Ha! <laughs> uh, well, so I ran out through the roller. There's a couple of woo, but uh, it turned out okay. Got it back on. It's got some strength to it. I'm happy with it anyways. This top piece, I just kind of cleaned up the edges where it has to fit around the, uh, the body, I guess. But uh, uh, I'm not going to do anything with it. It's so short what it's actually going to attach to. You'll end up on one, uh, one bead through it. So, yeah, I'm going to step down to a few smaller ones on the floor panels. But uh, I'll get this cleat code back in. I'll pull the floor pan out. We'll mark it out. And we'll uh, try to give one of those a shot, see how it turns out. So I got my little panel out. Uh, I ended up marking every four inches. I'll do a bead roll. I went in two and a half on this because that's going to be the sill, and that's going to be inside the uh, the jam, kind of, or what do you want to call it, the body, so there's no point in being up there. And then at the front here, I went in two inches, just from the line, so it'll actually, it'll kind of do a taper like that, <laughs> is my plan anyways. I made sure none of these lines are over uh, where the bolt's going to be for the body mount, so I'll roll it, I'll put it in, I'll clean it all off, and I can mark underneath for... Uh, if I want to weld it or whatever I want to do, but should be uh, that should be pretty good. So here's a new panel. So it's definitely a lot easier working on a smaller piece. The other thing I'm learning, I did a few practice pieces, but obviously I think it's a, you gotta get the hang of it, is if you come off your line, you can't just turn the metal. You gotta keep it kind of rolling and, and let it roll in. Otherwise you get a bunch of sharp corners in the bead. But this, I don't know, I think it's all right. It's got some strength to it. I'm happy with it. I got lots of strength running this way, the side to side will be nice, so. I'm going to call it good enough, slap this sucker in, click it down, and uh, mark to the other panel so I kind of can keep the symmetry going. I don't know how crazy I should really be. I mean, I'll probably have carpet or rubber mat on it, and i got to work on the front panel. But yeah. I don't know. Let me know what you think.
Well, there we go. So that side's in. I pulled the other side out. It's on the fender stand. So I got to clean up a little bit of the rust there. There's a couple of rivets I just kind of ground down. Uh, but yeah. So I'll get this one traced out, bead roll it. It's a bigger panel because it's basically not quite the whole length. It does stop about here. I'll get that in and then probably leave it for this video here because it's getting a little long in the tooth. I assume anyways. And uh, I still got to do the whole trans tunnel and a pile of welding and stuff. So that'll probably be for the next video. But uh, hey, I don't know. I'm sure by the last panel, I'll have this licked. Check that out. So I'm pretty stoked on it. I mean, the lines aren't perfect, but hey, suits the rest of the car and myself. Uh, I'm happy with it. Still needs a little bit of cleanup. Then I can start kind of tack welding it in, jack it up, and, and get it from the bottom. It's, uh, I mean, it's not bad. It's got a little bit of flex, but once you hold it down, it'll be just perfect. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, I gotta say. Uh, so that's where I'm gonna leave it tonight. And uh, for this video, I think it's probably droning on a little bit. But uh, I'll be back at it tomorrow. Actually, uh, Brent's going to help me do a little bit with the steering. And we've got a steering column and the brakes. Uh, so I can get that kind of set up. And then start working on the uh, trans tunnel and stuff like that. But that's it for this one. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it very much. Tell your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And yeah. See you guys on the next one.